Hi, I'm Selena from Annie's Bookstop of Worcester, and I'm here with Tom Gold. And he is a cartoonist, and he is also the author of a new book. Um, Tom, could you tell us about your new book? Sure. Well, um, I've got a copy here. It's called The Little Wooden Robot and the Log Princess, and it is a children's book. It's the it's the first book I've written for children after having done a few comic books and cartoon books for grown-ups. Uh, and it's kind of a fairy tale, which uh, kind of inspired by all the classic fairy tales that I liked as a child and to tell to my children. Oh, very good. So um, what was the inspiration for this new book? Well, um, my younger daughter, had a nickname uh in fact still does we call her the log because when she goes to sleep she sleeps thoroughly through any kind of noise and hubbub and things around her and always has since she was small and always needs to be woken in the morning and it just just has the most one of those lucky people who has a delightfully good night's sleep every night and one evening for my daughters when they were quite small i made up a story um about a little girl, a princess, in fact, and when she goes to sleep, she turns into a log and needs to be woken. In the in the version I made up in the first place, it was by her sister, but in subsequent drafts, the the princess sister got changed into a little wooden robot because robots are quite one of the things I like to draw. So I thought it'd be fun to uh, squeeze that in. <laughs> That's great. So what were the steps that you took to take it from uh, initial inspiration to the final uh, product? Well, there were a lot of steps, I suppose, because it was my first book and because I wanted it to be good and because I hadn't made a kid's book before. So it took me quite a long time. Uh, my children are both now teenagers, so their past having a fairy tale read to them. But over the years in between first telling them that story and publishing the book, I, well, first of all, I, 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 I made up the story. I sort of improvised the story a few more times to them and ironed out some of the problems and noticed some of the things that the girls really enjoyed. And then I just kept the story in my iPhone as a note. And whenever I found myself I was traveling quite a lot at the time promoting some of my comic books and instead of watching movies on planes I'd take out the iPhone and work on the draft and for, I spent a few years just fiddling around with it and trying to make it as good as possible and then I took it to uh, Neil Porter at well no no I didn't I took it to Stephen Malk my agent and he liked it and he took it to Neil and then that sort of set set things in motion for it being published by Neil Porter Books and Holiday House. Uh -huh. um, so what do you think draws readers to these kinds of books? Well, I suppose I learned a lot about children's books by having children and by having that few years when every night I was reading bedtime stories to them and um, I feel like I really had a boot camp there of what works and what doesn't. And I, I learned a lot through just reading hundreds of books, really. And I realized you want a, a story like this, which I really want to be a bedtime, a nice bedtime story. Mm -hmm. I suppose it's for children small enough that they're being read to. And as a reader of that sort of thing, as the parent, you want a book which makes you into a better actor than you are. You know, a great actor can probably turn any old text into a a wonderful performance but I'm not that and I noticed some books would really help you in the way they were written to be a good performer at sort of late in the day when you're tired and the kids are tired and I really appreciated those books which sounded good in my voice so I spent a lot of time with this book trying to make it as readable and performable as possible and I guess the other thing I, 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 I like in books is feeling that it's a window into a world a whole world which isn't just that story happening but you kind of imagine other things going on in there so I spent a lot of time kind of imagining the fairy tale world where my story happens and trying to make it a bit bigger than the the actual story that you read on the page.
Mm -hmm. Did you have to do any research at all for your book? Um, I mean, I sort of did a lot of research before I wrote it because I, I, I do like the form of the fairy tale. And so I read pretty much all of Grimm's fairy tales and a lot of, uh, a lot of the other fairy tales. Uh, and at first, I suppose I was looking for things I could steal or, or things I could just have happening in the background to relate to other fairy tales. So I guess that was as much as the research was. And, and I love those fairy tales anyway. So it was no, it didn't really feel like work. Mm -hmm. Okay. What was the biggest challenge that you had in writing and, and uh, putting out your latest book? Um, I suppose the biggest challenge was having written quite a lot of cartoons for grown-ups was figuring out a way to talk to children, which didn't feel like I was um, throwing away what's good about my work and, and felt like I was using that same language to tell a story for children. And I was still being me telling a different type of story rather than me pretending to be a children's author or me dumbing things down or covering everything in a sort of treacly layer of sugar, uh, finding a way to, to, to keep some of the stuff from my grown up work, but make something which children would hopefully enjoy. Mm -hmm. Now, you're actually uh, more of a, a cartoonist and an illustrator. Um, did you actually um, come up with the characters first before you wrote the story? Well, when you write comics and cartoons and things, you, you tend to have to work on the words and the pictures at the same time. They're, they're so intermingled on the comics page. And th so, so it's, it's quite a frustrating way to work. Um, it, it, when, once I've got things working, I'm, I, I enjoy it. But, but at first, it's quite difficult to get started. Whereas with this kid's book, I very much did write a story as if I was writing it for somebody else to illustrate. And then when I'd, when I'd um, written it, I sort of thought, OK, here's the text. How do I illustrate? So the two parts were perhaps more separate. But the good thing about writing a story for yourself to illustrate is you can give yourself all sorts of treats and write in the stuff that you like drawing. So the fact that there's a little wooden robot or there's a sort of great journey, which allowed me to draw a fantastically complicated map. I was sort of, I, I, I was keeping the text and illustration separate, but I was also thinking about what would be fun to, um, fun to illustrate. Mm -hmm. So what else can we expect from you in the near future? Well, I'm not, I'm not working on another kid's book yet. I feel like I slightly stumbled upon this idea and I'd, I'd like to find another thing I'm really sure about before I do another book for children. Um, mm -hmm. My next book will be called Revenge of the Librarians and it's a collection of the book, cartoons about books and literature that I do for the Guardian newspaper every week. So that'll be out in about a year from Drawn and Quarterly in Montreal who published all of my comic books. So that's the next book. And while I'm putting that together, I'm thinking about ideas for perhaps a new graphic novel for grown-ups or a children's story. I think I'll just have to see what takes my fancy. Uh-huh. So tell us more about your, um, your graphic novels and your, uh, your comics and, uh, and what, what other things that you do. Well, I, I make... I make two cartoons every week. I, I draw a cartoon for New Scientist magazine about the world of science and um, technology. And I draw a cartoon for the Guardian, sat, the Saturday Guardian newspaper in England. Um, and that's in the books pages. So it's always about books and literature. And th it's a nice thing actually having this weekly deadline where even if I don't make much progress on the, the other projects I've got, I've, I've always managed to do two pages of cartoons every week. So I, I really enjoy the feeling of working for newspapers and um, regularly making work. I, I saw your cartoon about the um, book cat in the live, the book cat uh, during the pandemic. I thought that was wonderful. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, I really enjoy making cartoons about books and literature. And it's very nice when you do when I do one which um, people enjoy and sort of gets a life of its own and, and, and 
you know, it's very nice being printed in a newspaper, but it's also very nice watching it being shared all over the world on social media. So that's a, that's a real treat when something like that, um, when I see it popping up all over the place. Mm -hmm. Now I have some questions about um, you being a writer. What's your favorite oh. part of being a writer on the whole writing and publishing process? Um, my favorite part? Well, I mean, as a writer, writer illustrator actually my favorite part is doing the drawings I find mm -hmm. drawing enjoyable and I can sit and doodle and it doesn't have to have any purpose and that for me is pleasurable whereas writing I find quite hard and I sort of have to I know it's a stage I have to go through um, but it's hard so so for me it's the drawing and designing and having an idea which I'm then putting down on the page is enjoyable. And the, the stage I'm at this afternoon, I was walking around just before I talked to you, sitting in a cafe, trying to come up with an idea for my cartoon this week for The Guardian, and I haven't got anything. So when we're finished, I'll be going back to sort of staring at a blank piece of paper, which is my least favorite part of the, the process. Mm. Oh, okay. Um, now, what do you consider the most challenging part of the writing process and, and how do you overcome that? Um, I think for me, the, the most difficult part is figuring out what I want to say or why I should put the effort into saying it. I'm not one of those writers who's constantly bursting with opinions and ideas that I need to share with the world. So for me, it's a sort of finding an idea and convincing myself that it's worth that it's worth doing that it's worth putting effort into and i i know the it's one of these unfortunate i know i know the answer is just to get on with it and to 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 be positive and press on but that's that's the part i find hardest is is the getting started which i think is probably true for a lot of writers and probably for a lot of people who want to write and don't is that getting getting started is is hard well, for you, it's it's also different because you have to do things every week or, you know, you have to do different things. Mm. You have to come up with different ideas all the time. So it's, well, it's the good thing about the weekly deadline is it gets rid of that kind of perfectionism where you're trying to think, what do I have to say? As the deadline looms, you just think, oh, it doesn't matter. Anything, anything will do. And often when you look at it in the cold light of day later, you think, oh, that was a good idea. I just didn't see it at the time and there's part of the panic of a deadline coming which really helps clarify my thoughts and I, I, um, I try and give myself fake deadlines with longer projects so that I, I kind of get some of that um, just get on with it Tom don't wait for it to be perfect part. Mm -hmm. Okay um, what has been your favorite adventure during your whole cartooning and writing career? Ooh, my favorite adventure. Uh, I suppose I just, I, the, the thing I, I really enjoy is, ma is, is making the work, putting it out into the world and um, seeing people enjoy it. And I love doing book signings where I, I meet people who've, you know, perhaps bought the book, read it, loved it and brought it along to get it signed. It's, it's a, a delightful feeling that people are actually enjoying these things. And sometimes when you're sitting at home or in your studio, as I'm in now, just working away, you're, you're quite separate from that. And it is nice to, to, um, to feel, to, to sometimes get the feeling that it really is, it, it's not just disappearing down an email to the publisher. It's actually going into the world and people are enjoying it. So that, that, that I, I really enjoy that feeling. Mm -hmm. So what is the greatest lesson you've learned thus far in your career? Well, I'm not sure if I've 100% learned it, but the, I, I, I'm, I'm getting there, which I think is just the thing to do is, is to get on with it and to work hard and just press on. And um, I, 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 I still spend too much time procrastinating and waiting for things to be perfect before I get on with them. And, and that's, I, I, I know that's not the right thing to do. The thing to do is just to work hard and hopefully some good will come of it. Okay. And what piece of advice would you um, give to other writers or, um, or illustrators? 
Mm. Uh, well, that was sort of a piece of advice there, wasn't it? But I'm sure I've got something else. Um, <laughs> what advice would I give? Aside from what you had just mentioned. About yes, well, you know. exactly. Um, I think... I always now uh, show my work to my wife and to a couple mm -hmm. of close friends and ask them what I think, what they think of it. And I hate doing that. And I hate the feeling when they're looking at it and I'm looking at them trying to figure out what they think. And it's, it's, a, it's a slightly painful part of the process, but the feedback from somebody who hasn't had their head stuck in the piece of work and, and, not taking it out mm -hmm. um, is really helpful. So I, I try and once I've got something which I think is beginning to get where I want it to be, I do try and let somebody else read it. Um, and that has helped me find things that were weird blind spots that I hadn't seen from being the one inside the work. So I'd, I'd recommend, painful as it is, um, asking some people to give you some feedback. As long as they're, as long as, that they're the right person and that's part of the problem is finding the right people that's an excellent thought yeah because if you have the wrong people it's it's going to be really hard yes that's exactly and that that is and i think even with the right people it's hard so it is it's maybe not a great piece of advice but i think it has to be done and it's probably better it's done a bit earlier in the process mm -hmm. excellent um, now I have some questions about you as a person. What is one thing that most people don't know about you? Hmm. I think I think because my because my work is very um, lots of li little careful lines. It's not very virtuoso. It's quite sort of. Uh, quiet and I think you can tell looking at it that it's very carefully done I think people often imagine I'm rather old and I quite often come on um, zoom calls like this and people say oh I imagined you were an old man with a long white beard <laughs> so it seems strangely like a lot of people don't know that I'm uh, what am I 45 um, um, so yeah and, and I guess I have been making cartoons for 20 more than 20 years now but uh, I suppose I, at some point it won't be something to know because I will be an old man. But yeah, that's the thing I'd say. People don't, people tend to assume I'm, I'm quite old. So you started very, very young. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was, I was I've, I've been drawing cartoons since I was a little boy and I was self-publishing things while I was at college. And that, that when I graduated led to a weekly strip in Time Out London magazine when I was just out of college. So yeah, I did. It wasn't very good, but I, I did start early. In your opinion, it wasn't very good. <laughs> Ooh. And they did sack me after a year, so maybe, maybe in everybody's opinion, it wasn't very good. But it was a good experience, and I, I learned a lot doing it. So, yeah. Okay. Um, what is or are your passions uh, when you're not writing, and how do you make time for the doing the things that you love? Um. I mean, one of the problems with being an artist or a writer is that once you turn one of your main, which usually is somebody's main passion, into your job, then you, you do have to also clear some space for some non-job passions. So I get I like to cook. And the other thing I like to do is spend time in the outdoors. So uh, my wife and I like going for walks in the countryside and I like going for long walks. And it's one of I mean, I'm sort of turning it back into work now. It's one of the ways I sort of think of ideas is by, is by mm -hmm. walking either around London or in the countryside. So that's definitely something that even if there is a little bit of work, it's still something I, I really enjoy. Hmm. Okay. And um, what does your writing space look like or, or your workspace? I mean, with you, it's a little different because you have the, an art space as well. Yes. Well, that's where I'm, I'm sitting now. So I, yeah, I've got, I've got a few little different areas. I've got the computer here, um, which I, I, I use for all the, the coloring of my work. So when everything's finished, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in front of the computer a lot, scanning things. 
Um, and just off to my, what's that, my right, is a, a standing desk where I, I, I stand and draw my work. It's, it's, it's a light box, so I can switch a light on inside it and I can trace one drawing into another. And I spend a lot of time doing that. There's some, there's some artists who their work is very flows out of them and they and they and they want a sketchiness but but for me it's a lot of painstaking redrawing I draw something and then I trace it and it gets a little bit better and then I trace that drawing it gets a little bit better so I spend a lot of time at the light box and then the other thing is you can see behind me there's a sort of gray chair there that's where I I kind of sit with my notebook and try and think of ideas from time to time so yeah it's it's quite a small square of, of office space in a studio that I share with some other artists, but, um, but it's, it's all I need to get my, to get my work done. Mm -hmm. now, when you're writing, um, do you prefer music or silence? What kind of music? Um, well, when I'm, when I'm thinking of ideas and when I'm writing words, I can't really listen to anything. I could maybe have some, uh, piano music or something on in the background but really that tends to be when I need to really concentrate but there's a lot of the process a lot of the times when I'm drawing or coloring or cross-hatching my work you can you I can um make the work while also listening to other things going on so I listen to a lot of podcasts and audio books and the radio while I'm doing that so it's quite it's it's quite relaxing and there's something quite nice about just sitting making all these little lines again and again while also being educated or or, or, or having a book read to you so that that's that's an enjoyable part of the process for me mm -hmm. okay and um when um do you have any favorite book uh, sorry, um, any favorite uh, food or drink or anything with you when you're writing? Um, I suppose the two, the two, the, the, you know, as I was saying, I'm, I'm always trying to come up with ideas. And the only things which I think really help are walking and coffee. So I, 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 I walk to the coffee shop a lot to just to take a break and to, to, to have a walk. And hopefully on the walk there or while I maybe sit down and have a coffee or while I walk back, hopefully in one of those spaces, that's when something goes on, the caffeine and the, mm -hmm. the blood moving around from the walking and the change of things in front of me. I think that's the closest I have to a system for coming up with ideas. So I guess coffee's the, the, the food stuff, which is most useful in my work. Okay. Now, um, a lot of writers often have um, furry or feathered or otherwise non-human uh, companions with them um, when they're uh, when they're writing or, um, or or maybe doing artwork. But I'm not sure about that. Um, do you and and do they help you or hinder you? Well, I, I, I as I said, I share a studio with two other humans. And uh, one, of, one of the guys, Dan, has got a dog recently called George, who's very politely staying out of my space while we do this podcast. Uh, I wouldn't say he helps, but it's, it's nice to, he's quite fun to have around. So yeah, George is, is now part of our, our workspace. Oh, that's great. Okay, I just have two more questions for you. Um, sure. Where can people find your work aside from Annie's Bookstop of Worcester? Um, and I know since you're in England, it's a totally different story. Um, but uh, in, in the United States, um, Annie's Bookstop of Worcester, uh, you can get um, you can get your book um, at our store. And uh, and <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, you can get it by um, by calling us at 508-796-5613 or, um, or you can send email to orders at anniesbooksworcester.com. But where else could people find your book? Well, I hope in all, all over the place and hopefully in a nice independent bookshop like yours. And uh, my website, tomgold.com, has links to lots of different places to get the book. So that's what I'd recommend. Great. And last question is, how can we follow your work and share your awesomeness? 
Well, um, my website, and I'm on Twitter and Instagram as at Tom Gold. So you can you can see my cartoons there. I post a couple of cartoons every week. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Tom. This is wonderful. And uh, I hope people will read your book. It's really adorable. <laughs> um, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, anyway, um, it was great talking to you. And uh, I, I know you probably won't get to this side of the pond for quite a while, but if you do, uh, you're certainly welcome to come and visit us. It would be wonderful. Oh, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> and thanks very much for having me today. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Bye.